Jenna will give you a talk in there. Who's going to give me a talk? Jenna's going to give you a talk. Hey, you talk Jenna, how are you doing? Uh, talk on. <laughs> <laughs> Monaghan and Mushrooms, you're representing. Monaghan and Mushrooms. No pressure. All right, well, uh, I'm Tony. Uh, we're doing a little bit of promotion for next year's festival already, hopefully. So we'll all be on the YouTube shortly. Little clips of that will be put up. So uh, you can check it out. Kidigar, uh, mushroom festival. So we'd like to give you. Tell me about what you have here. What do we have here? What have we got? Is this the beginning or the? Beginning and end as well. Oh. Yeah. Okay, start from the beginning. Right. So this is the beginning here. Yeah. This is our ingredients. So we start off obviously with straw, and then we've got gypsum and chicken litter. Right. So with the straw here, we start off with this and we dip it in water and we leave it sitting for a period of time and then we break them up and add in our gypsum and our chicken litter. Okay. This here is to kind of take the greasiness out, out of the straw and this here is to add a natural, it's a natural source of, um, of nitrogen. So what happens is then it's kind of turned and turned and turned, the temperature comes up to about 70 degrees, well you don't want it to go that high but up to roughly about 60 degrees and you're constantly turning and turning and turning it until you end up with this compost here, which is known as phase one. So it's quite dark, it's quite wet. And at this stage then we add our spawn. So this right. here is then um, it's wheat grains with mycelium. It's wheat wheat grains. Wheat grains. Wheat, no, what's uh, this? Right. Rye, sorry, yeah, sorry, right. it's rye okay. grains, and then um, there's mycelium. I know a rye grain. Yes, absolutely, yeah. and then this is added to this to juice our phase two compost. You can see it there, it has the grains oh, right, yes. in them. So yeah. then what we do is we put them into tunnels and we kind of manipulate the temperature and red humidity, and uh, we end up then with this compost here. So we let the mycelium grow from the grains into the compost. So from that bag, how many mushrooms would you expect to extract? From this per kilo, per kilo of compost, we'd get maybe 20 to 25 kilos of mushrooms. And do you know at this stage what type of mushrooms they'll be? Oh yeah, this one here will be what we currently have on the bottom type of mushrooms there, yeah, there, yeah. 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 White, yeah, so you're so spice specific, for it. Yeah, so you yeah. know exactly. And would you know how big they've got or wide or? Well, it all depends on the farm, how big they want yeah. them really. Yeah. So, like, well, really you can get up to about 90 here, millimeters all, anyway. Yeah. Okay, so this is the point where we fill the house, so we'll end up putting this into the house and then we case it with um, it's kind of a peat, ma peat based material and then there's a bit of sugar beet lime and everything in that for the pH oh, yes, yeah. and uh, what happens is then is it's kind of let sit for about two days and then we close off the house to kind of let the carbon dioxide levels come up right. and at this stage the temperature is roughly about 26 degrees, 20, well no about 24 degrees and uh, the whole point of bring, bringing up the carbon dioxide is to kind of force the mycelium to come up from the, this compost here and up into the casing. So they're kind of looking for oxygen. So there you get this kind of white mycelium coming up through the casing. So that's the next stage after this. And then eventually what we do is after about six to seven days, we um, introduce oxygen into the, into, the, um, into the environment. And then we bring down the temperature as well from about 23, 24 degrees down to about 17. And we get this then. So this here is basically what we're trying to do is we're trying to induce the mushrooms and that's the whole point of bringing down your temperature and introducing oxygen. And it's kind of like a survival mechanism and we take advantage of that survival mechanism to end up with a food product. So you get these pins here and this is kind of day 13. So this is 13th day maybe after you, we initially fill the house. Right. And then um, we just these eventually then grow into what you see here. Yes. So this is our first flush right. of mushrooms here. And you can see from the compost that it's all well grown there and it's all kind of you've got this interconnection here between your compost and your casing. And you can see there that it's all kind of come up and then you end up with these mushrooms. And what we would generally do is we train our pickers to pick them in a kind of a staggered fashion and that they would pick maybe a few baby buttons initially. Yes. So you'll end up with this product here. Right, yes. And then they leave so many of them and to grow up into the closed cups. Right. And then when they're picking the closed cups, they'll leave so many closed cups to grow up into these flats. Right. So some people have this kind of idea that these are all different types of mushrooms, but yes. this here started yeah. off as this. I see, yeah. But it's just about giving it the time to grow. Yes, and right. it's all the kinds of demand. And the bigger, uh, slightly different colour here, are they? Yes, yeah, so what we have here is just, um, this is like, this product here is what you see on the bed. So it's the garage by spores. 
And then this is just the, the browner version of it. It's right, known yes. as the chestnut, yes. the criminy, right? And um, we grow both, and we obviously grow them to different sizes, and we also run to different specs for different customers. Um, and then this one here, in particular, is one of our most recent launches from the Research and Development Department of Monaghan Mushrooms. Um, it's a new strain that was developed between Monaghan Mushrooms and with Sylvan. And basically, it was made to be that little bit wilder. So as you can see there, it has a, it's quite wild in fashion in that it has, it's not a uniform colour. This is what we currently, this is our current strain. As you can see, it's quite uniform in colour. Mm -hmm. So it's quite commercial kind of yes, a look yeah, on it. Yeah. Whereas these are a little bit more natural looking. So you find that for the commercial market, the look is important. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. We, there's like a, there's there's always going to be a market for this type of mushroom. Yes. And as you can see there, it has kind of like a fluffy appearance, and then it also has a different colour. So it's quite yes, kind of yes, a light yes, colour yeah. brown and then white. Right. Um, the beauty about this mushroom is that it actually opens quite soon. It has an early opening. So you get this kind of a clean veil kind of effect and they're kind of like lips on them as well. Right, yeah. so they're just, and also these grow, we grow these to flats as well and they're very like what you find out on, in the field. Yes, yeah. Because you get kind of a dip in them and they're quite flat and they open out and they're, 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 they're also a little bit drier than what we have so the texture is different and um, they're great for cooking and they have a kind of a nutty sweet flavour off them right. as well. Right, well the number left. That's it. I say, yeah. Just uh, take it. Uh, just tell me again about yourself. You're, you're uh, my name is Jenna Warby, and um, I work obviously with Mon and Mushrooms in the Research and Development Department. I'm uh, the Food Technology Project Manager there, so a lot of my projects are obviously related to the new strain and uh, also growing conditions and stuff like uh, Kieran, Kieran Kenny, he works on the packaging side of the things. He's involved in creation of new packaging. So we're currently trying to come away from the PVC and PP. We're trying to get away from that to kind of more natural, kind of recyclable materials, compostable materials, reusable materials as well. And um, that's really what, what, what our department's all about. It's all about kind of improving what we have, making it more of a natural process, and also creating new things, so as I said, coming away from our oil-based materials to things that are more environmentally friendly. Great. Gemma, thanks very much. No Appreciate problem it. at all. Thank you. No problem at all.